Hello and welcome, I'm DDF Racer and today I'm going to be unboxing, assembling and trying out my brand new Next Level Racing GT Elite Sim Racing Cockpit. Disclaimer time, nice and early in the video. After watching my recent review of the HF8 seat vibration thingy, which by the way wasn't exactly a ringing endorsement, I've got to admit I'm kind of underwhelmed. Next Level Racing got in touch, said they'd enjoyed the video, passed it on to the R&D team and then sent me this rig and seat to review and keep for free. I know, <laughs> I'm just as surprised as you are. Getting a new rig wasn't really something I was considering as I've been using a Simitech K2-R for a couple of years now and honestly, I can't fault it. So if this next level racing GT Elite rig is going to live up to the hype, then um, it's got to be good, really, really good. According to the website specs, the Next Level Racing GT Elite cockpit has an anodized, laser etched and precision pre-machined aluminium frame, fully adjustable wheel and pedal mounts, and includes a standard, a shifter and handbrake mount, a flex-free seat slider system with brackets, a butt kicker adapter, adjustable shock absorption feet, and cable management clips and a nice handy tool holder. And in terms of aesthetics, uh, this is the officially licensed Ford G GT version of the GT Elite cockpit, which comes in nice premium packaging to keep it all safe and cozy in transit. Now before I can get stuck into those boxes that are waiting rather patiently behind me, I'm going to have to unmount everything from this current rig and pack the rig down because unfortunately I just don't have the space for two rigs at the same time. So uh, cue the time lapse. Looks a little bit different, doesn't it? Um, I haven't had the room this tidy for years, but it's about to get a whole lot messy because this is about to come apart. Maybe I'll start the new one today. If not, I'll crack them with that tomorrow. But anyway, let's get this thing packed down first. We got ourselves a stuck bolt here. 20 minutes later. Okay, <laughs> well the rig's downstairs. I'm exhausted now, that stuff is heavy. So yeah, I might crack on with it later. I might do it tomorrow, I'm not sure yet. <sighs> I do need a little bit of a break though. Okay, so it's a couple of hours later. I've had a shower, I've had some dinner, I've got myself a coffee and I am ready to get back into stage two of this process. And of course, let's get out the most dangerous knife in all of sim racing. <laughs> So we got ourselves some stickers here. Instruction manual. Oh, it looks very straightforward. I don't know if you guys can see that. It looks a little bit scuffed, to be honest with you. Let me see if I can hold it up to the camera. Uh, it's meant to be white. It kind of feels like the, the top layer of the paint has come off a little bit, but just thought I'd point that out. The rest of it looks absolutely stunning, by the way. Uh, that blue is superb, and the quality of this is amazing. And it's really not that heavy, so... Ah, feeling positive about this.
Okay, so I don't know if I'm just being a bit dim because I've been going at this for uh, two and a half hours now, but it seems like the mounts that you put on the side of the cockpit for the shifter are more suited towards the right hand side. Now I know that the vast majority of people who fit a shifter to their rig will be using the shifter on the right, but I was born and raised in the UK and I live in Australia. The shifter is always on the left hand side for me. See, they kind of mount diagonally. Right, well, uh, there's the basic framework done. It's got the seat mount ready to go, the shifter mount ready to go, the steering wheel mounting plate and the pedal mounting plate, all of which are fully adjustable. <sighs> that took a lot longer than I expected. And it's not difficult, it's just time consuming. And it, to be fair, it does say in the instructions that this is a two person build. So uh, I probably should have got some help with that. I don't know if you can see that on the bottom of the box there, it says floor mat included, which is really cool, but it would have been nice to have known that <laughs> when I started building the rig, so I've, I could have put the rig on top of it. Yeah, it's strange that it's bundled in with the seat and not the rig. A slightly baffling decision when it came to designing this packaging, the um, nuts and bolts that I need have been taped to the bottom of the box. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like I'm going box crawling, which sounds like it should be on Urban Dictionary. There wasn't actually anything inside the box. It was just an empty box taped to the bottom of the big box. However, the bits were taped on top of the box. Oh, and of course, yep, as you can see, this thing comes with seat belts, which I am looking forward to using, not so that I don't get ejected out the rig in VR, but hopefully it'll help my posture a little bit, because I know I always slouch when I'm racing, so hopefully this can keep my back nice and straight while I'm racing. <sighs> there we go. <laughs> I think we're done for today. So I'm gonna go and have a cold drink, cold shower and head to bed. I'm gonna pick up this again tomorrow. Okay, so total honesty time here. I couldn't resist myself, I couldn't help it. <laughs> Last night after I turned the camera off, I actually did a little bit more work on the rig. Got the seating position, got the uh, wheel position, the pedal mounts all kind of in the right position because you guys know me, I'm a massive nerd and I actually took measurements, very precise measurements of everything on the previous rig so that when I built this one I wouldn't have to go through that fine tuning process again. So that that's all sorted. I've also put the mat underneath the rig as well, uh, but that was it really, not too much. I don't think I ended up going to bed until about 2am in the morning anyway. <laughs> so yeah, this coffee is going down a treat right now. But today on the cards we've still got to build the monitor stand, we still got to attach the button box mount and the keyboard and tray mount as well. And once all that's in position, we got to put everything back on the rig. So steering wheel, pedals, monitors, the works. So yeah, Day two of the project. It's a shame to be spending indoors. I know it looks a little bit weird because everything's kind of offset to one side. The reason for that is I do have the triples attachments, but I don't actually run triples. I'm not a triple screen racer. I'm a VR racer, which means that I only use the right hand side monitor for looking at chat. <coughs> Excuse me, really dry throat there. 
Oh, that's better. But yeah, the right hand side monitor, it's more like a reference monitor. It's not actually used for sim racing, so the closer in I can get it, the better. It's coming together nicely. Look at it, it looks great. It's so clean, so minimal, so functional, but not sort of like industrial looking. It's just very, it's very sleek, it's very nice. I've still got to mount the keyboard and mouse attachment and also the button box attachment as well. So let's get those done first, but then I can start putting all the uh, monitors and things back on the rig. To be honest I'm not entirely sold on that it's it doesn't have a lot of mobility in terms of where you can actually place it maybe once I actually get set up and get the button box on and get driving it won't be so bad now saying that there is an option to also mount this thing on the uh, side of where the wheel actually mounts to but to be honest with you that leaves it very close into the screen and is probably going to obscure quite a lot of the screen in the process as well which isn't isn't an option for me because I use this rig for more than just sim racing this is my daily rig basically so all of my video editing which I spend a lot of time doing it's also what I use Photoshop for for all my thumbnails and car liveries and I also use this rig to work from home occasionally so I am sat in it for extended periods of time that can't really have the screen obscured by a wheelbase or um, a button mount so I think to be honest that still is the best way to do it off to the side we'll have to wait and see until we get it up and running the uh, t-nuts that they provided for the keyboard mount are too small so you can see there they're pretty small right these are the ones that came with the rest of the rig this is what I should have and this is what they gave us thankfully I've got a lot left over from the previous items that I've built so I can scavenge a few together if I didn't have any left over that would have been an immediate stop to the build right there because well the t-nuts were just sliding straight down the channels The mounting bolt for the keyboard wasn't quite flush, so there was a lot of wiggle room in it. I had to go back and pack it out with an extra nylon washer, so thankfully, again, I had some leftovers from the start of the build. You want everything to be nice and flush, uh, not overly tight, because then obviously you can damage and strip the, strip the threads. Every time the force feedback went, that would be a rattle. Right, let's get everything mounted back on it again. Okay, well that's uh, everything back in position. It is currently 2.05 a.m. Yay! <laughs> I'm done. I'm absolutely spent. That took a lot longer than I was expecting, but it is such a massive relief to finally, finally have that all finished. I could spend another hour or two just getting everything wired up and getting the computer back in, but to be honest, <laughs> I need to go to bed. Day three. <clears throat> I'm feeling quite sore, to be honest with you. I didn't get much sleep, but 
just aching everywhere and the ends of my fingers as well from all of the thumb screws and the allen keys are just really raw. Anyway, I should stop complaining, I'm only 34. One thing that I did notice is the immense amount of packaging that comes off building a rig like this. The polystyrene, I don't know if they've like shrunk it somehow, but some of, the, some of those extrusion pieces are very, very hard to get out of the uh, out of the polystyrene. Anyway, the end is in sight. Hopefully I'll have a working rig very shortly. Everything is there, I just need to put the computer back into place and then wire it all up and um, go driving. So. Yeah, let's get on with that. That is that. Wow, this is awesome, so sturdy. The quality is amazing. It's just so sleek, so efficient in the design. There's no extra bits that you don't need. It feels like I've got so much more space than my previous rig, even though pretty much exactly the same size, you know, dimension wise, but the way it fills that space, it's just the basic bare bones framework, which is not to say it's a basic rig, not by any means. I've got button box attachment, shifter attachment, keyboard and mouse attachment, got the monitor with the triples and everything. All the devices went on really straightforward. And I think I've actually nailed the seating position as well. I'm very glad that I took those measurements before I took my old rig down because I've been able to pretty much recreate the whole seating position one for one. I'm sure over the course of the next few days, next week or so, um, I'm going to be finding things that do need slight adjustments here and there. The button box is on a different side, so that's going to take some muscle memory to get used to. The camera has got a much better position because you can see behind me, you can see more of the wheel, you can actually see the button box now in the frame. It's not all positive, I will say that. There's a few things that, um, how do I say this, uh, slightly frustrating and slightly annoying with this that I would like to change. Now in the instructions it says you can mount the shifter to the left or the right, however the brackets just don't work on the left, they're not flush because the uprights aren't straight, they're sort of diagonal if you will. So the diagonal part of the bracket is only flush if you fit it to the right hand side, so that is a little bit frustrating just aesthetically. I mean it doesn't affect the functionality of it whatsoever, it still works exactly the same. It just just, it's going to annoy me. There's a little thing sticking out down there because it should be the way, but minor. One thing that isn't so minor, the two uprights that come up like that, they get in the way of the monitor. Now I've got a curved monitor that is quite wide and to be able to see the corners of the monitor, I'd have to raise it up. But if I raise the monitor, then it's too high for my driving position. So I, I know that the monitor stand is independent of the rig. I've got the freestanding version, and I don't know if that would be different if you've got the monitor stand that bolts into the rig, whether they take that into account. That's where the wheel is at the moment. If I was to move the wheel all the way up to the top of the uprights, that's here. The wheel would be like up here <laughs> for me, which is way too tall. I mean, I'm kind of picking at straws here, to be honest with you, in terms of the actual rig itself. Um, it's Yeah, on the whole, it's absolutely absolutely superb in terms of functionality and design and visuals. So what should we go drive then? Well, this is a Ford themed rig. It's a Ford GT rig, basically. So it would make sense to go and drive a Ford GT. And of course, while we're loading in, we got to do this seriously. Seatbelts are going on. So I know I look like a massive idiot. <laughs> I'm strapped into a stationary rig. This could really help my back and my spine over the course of the next 30 years. So I'm going to give this a go. Anyway, finally, after days and days of backbreaking work, I'm not going to lie, I really should have got someone to help me with this. They weren't kidding when they said it was a two-person job in the manuals. <laughs> anyway, after days of that, it's finally time to get out on track. 
force feedback. I don't know whether it's just the new seating position feels... Feels nice. When you're setting up a steering wheel, you're meant to uh, point the wheelbase, like the shaft of the wheelbase, in between your shoulders. Like, on my previous rig, it was set up completely horizontal, you know, perpendicular to the floor, whereas now, now that I'm older and wiser and I've built rigs and I've, you know, used one for a few years, instead of just having a Logitech G29 clamped to a desk, which was my bread and butter for 10 years, really. Um, now that I know what I know, I know that one of the things is, yeah, you should always point the, uh, the wheelbase at your shoulders, as if they were extensions of your arms. I'm noticing I can feel the vibrations a lot more than I was previously, and it feels really nice, you know? I can really feel the vibrations through the steering wheel a lot more in the frame of the rig itself. Maybe it's because I don't have the monitors mounted to the same piece of... Uh, metal that the steering wheel is mounted to, there's a lot less coming off the base rig itself. So maybe the vibrations are getting transferred more evenly that way. Like the pedals are at the perfect position, the steering wheel is at the perfect position. This feels so natural and it feels so comfortable. Because it's a fixed seat, it doesn't have any moving parts, it's literally all moulded into one. When you push down on the brake pedal, there is absolutely no give. It's not like you're putting those forces into the seat and the seat's kind of giving way a bit. This chair has absolutely no give. Well, I feel like I'm able to put more force into the brakes. Not that I need more travel, not that I need to make it a stiffer brake, I just need to increase the upper upper limit of the uh, of the load cell. I just had my first moment then, I just noticed the virtual mirror in the bottom right of the screen and I instinctively moved my hand out to the right, except the button box isn't there anymore, it's over on this side, so I'm gonna have to have to look at it, there we go, that's off. That's that's going to take a little bit of getting used to. That's going to take some extensive practice to not just like grab my hand out. Especially because I always use VR. You know, VR is my thing. Yeah, wow, I'm going to have to do some more testing in this thing. This feels great. But I don't think doing it live is the way to do it. So I'm going to go and run some laps. I'm going to go and really just focus on the driving and the feeling of this instead of trying to commentate to you at the first time. I mean, th those are my pure, unfiltered thoughts, so that's as honest as it gets. But, I'm, yeah, I'm going to have to do some serious laps and just uh, really get a feel for this thing and then eloquently put it into words over some replay footage like a true professional. <laughs> Now that I've had a few days to get some longer driving sessions across various sims under my belt and make a few more adjustments, for example I've increased the angle of the pedals and also raised the main monitor up, I've got to say, this GT Elite cockpit by Next Level Racing is one fine bit of kit. The overall experience of constructing it was super straightforward, if a little time consuming. There were a few moments that were physically awkward, especially towards the end of the build, when there was less space to work with and there were weight-bearing parts of the frame which needed adjusting, so I can definitely see why they say two people are required. But the whole assembly comes together with T-nuts and bolts, pre-drilled holes, and... Well, that's it. No screws, no special tools required. Everything you need to build one of these things is literally in the box. The instructions are great too. I didn't need to resort to the help videos at any point since the diagrams all made sense and broke the process down into very manageable bite-sized steps. I know that sounds like an obvious thing to say, but honestly, you don't truly appreciate a good manual until you've had to try and make sense of a bad one. So yeah, next level racing, whoever put together the documentation for you, Give them a raise. In terms of packaging, again, a really nice job all around. Super secure and safe, consisting of the transport box, retail box, polystyrene inserts, and then the many bits of the rig itself. It sounds like a lot, but honestly, there was hardly any waste. The packing was very efficient. None of those foam peanuts or whatever they're called. No bubble wrap or airbags to hold everything in place. That said, the way everything was so tightly packed into the polystyrene made it quite difficult to remove, especially the aluminium framework, which was absolutely absolutely wedged into position. There are also a lot of leftover bolts and bits and pieces, which normally is a concern as you start to panic, you know? What did I forget? <laughs> Have I missed a step? But now nah, it's just a case of next level racing going a bit overboard with the spare parts. Each bag is clearly labelled too, so you know exactly what diameter and length each nut or bolt is, and each box, not just the main box, also has its own set of Allen keys, a spanner, and a spirit level, which was a nice touch. 
As for the adjustability of the rig, the pedal and wheel supports have these markers on them for alignment. And along with the spirit levels I just mentioned, it's really easy to get everything perfectly lined up and there's a good amount of range in them too, along with the seating position and the monitor heights and angles. That said, it would also be nice to have a few of these markers on the monitor stands as well. It was a bit of trial and error finding the center position and then also making sure that both side posts were exactly the same height and not kind of slanted to one side. Something that you can't adjust though is the pedal or seat height. They bolt in where they bolt in and that's where they sit. The seat slides back and forth and the pedal base rotates so you can adjust the angle but not how close they are to the ground so basically you get what you get. Your legs are going to be relatively raised unless you can find a way to boost up the seat somehow. Now because of the slanted uprights for the wheel mount, the wheel's height has a knock-on effect on everything else too. You can't adjust it independently since it's not a case of just going up and down. If you move the wheel higher up, it also gets closer to you, which means you're also going to need to adjust the pedals closer to you and the seat further back as well to maintain your seating position. If you're running your monitor in a realistic position with the wheelbase and wheel directly in front of it, then you're also going to have the problem of these uprights being in the way and blocking out the bottom corners of your monitor, unless you're running the wheel in the highest position at the top of the uprights, of course. But unless you're a giant, then the wheel will be on your eye line, so uh, that's not great. To avoid this, the monitor is now higher up than I ideally like for racing, and I feel like I'm kind of looking at the roof of the car a little bit, but since I do 99% of my racing in VR and don't actually use the monitor for the majority of the time, it's not that big of an issue for me. For dedicated monitor racers though, especially those with larger or wider screens in the centre position, it could be a bit of an issue as those uprights will get in the way. This is a racing rig though, to be fair, not an office desk, so we have to keep that in mind as its primary function I guess, but yeah. If you sit in this cockpit and use your computer for anything other than racing, like myself for example who does a ton of video editing, those uprights are going to slightly obscure your monitor. The additional attachment arm for button boxes, phones, tablets and so on is also a little bit odd. It can't bend back on itself as the hinge is limited to 90 degrees so you're left with something in this awkward no man's land out to your side. Although the actual mount itself is decent. The foam padding and locking wing nuts keep your devices nice and secure and you can also add on an extra section for a second device. Handy for me as I use my phone to switch scenes on the live stream. There's also a decent amount of space on either side of the wheelbase too so it could be a handy area to have some more accessories. For example that's where I've mounted my pedal cam and also have the Bluetooth receiver for my microphone setup. In fact there seems to be a decent amount of space all around the cockpit. It's like Next Level Racing have designed this to have the smallest footprint possible and not have any unnecessary bits and pieces just for the sake of it. When you think of minimalist and simple which is what this rig is you might think I mean basic too but that's really not the case. Compared to my old rig which just felt like some of the framework was a little bit over engineered in places and took up more space than it needed to. This GT Elite cockpit feels very open and not restrictive. You're not tightly packed in and there's no clutter even with everything mounted and plugged in. Speaking of which, the cable management is really good too. The groove channels in the frame allow you to tuck things away and the clips are handy at keeping things fixed in position. Although it's very important that you put these on before you start assembling the frame since they slide in from the side you can't just directly press them into the channels so once all the t-nuts and bolts are in place then they're going to be blocking the way and you can't just slide the clips past unless you start taking the whole thing apart again now i don't know if this one is a standard design across most rigs but there is no foot bar on the gt elite which means you can rest your feet on the ground and stretch under the pedals when you're not using them i can fully extend my legs which really does make a difference when i'm not driving so much more comfortable. And the seat is surprisingly comfortable too, like it's actually really comfortable, more so than my previous one, which is probably what surprised me the most about this rig. It looks like it'd be quite unforgiving, but the molded design on the ES1 seat fits really well and you kind of just slide into it. Everything has the right contour and you can relax without feeling like you're being propped up at all. I know I'm definitely not as skinny as I used to be, <laughs> uh, but I had no issues fitting in this. However, I could potentially see people of the um, larger variety 
possibly making this a bit of a squeeze. The official word in the manual is that this seat is suitable for a weight of 250 kilos and waistlines up to 42 inches. The padding is quite firm, but it has a decent amount to give, kind of like a memory foam pillow. And it appears to be recessed into the plastic mold itself instead of just being a thin layer slapped on top with a bit of glue. So there's plenty of support for your back and your legs. It doesn't look like you can remove the padding though, so I imagine after a little while the sweat and dirt will build up. I'm going to have to stay on top of keeping the seat nice and clean, wipe it down regularly, that kind of thing, and it might actually be worth getting some kind of removable washable cover. The fact there are no moving parts in the seat makes it really strong structurally, and you don't waste any force pushing yourself backwards when you get on the brakes. I actually found myself having to increase the maximum threshold on my brake pedal since I was locking up too easily compared to before because I could apply more pressure through my leg. Now, the seat belts. <laughs> I know, I might look like a bit of an idiot sitting here strapped into a stationary rig, but they really do help with my posture. Being fixed in position and knowing that you're not slouching or sliding down over time just feels really nice, and no doubt my spine will thank me for this in the future. It's an odd sensation, but you actually feel much more connected to the car with the belts on, more immersed somehow, and I think it might be because you absorb more of the force feedback through your arms, since your body is locked down and less likely to move around by taking the brunt of the force coming through the wheel. The design of the seat combined with the openness of the rig means it's got great airflow by the way, and it stays nice and cool even after an extended driving session. To be fair, it is winter now in Australia, so not exactly stinking hot. Still pretty warm though, but the true test will be when it gets to summer and regularly starts hitting 30 degrees and 80 plus humidity every day, so stay tuned for that one in a few months. All in all, the GT Elite Cockpit by Next Level Racing is a superb sim racing rig which does exactly what it says it'll do and exactly what you'd want it to do. There are add-ons for pretty much every accessory out there and the framework is modular, not limiting you to mounting things in only one fixed position. You really can make it your own and with the leftover T-nuts and bolts, you could mount extra stuff or even get creative with your own aluminium profile designs. It's sturdy, easy to put together, easy to adjust, comfortable for longer sessions, doesn't make you feel trapped in and also, not that I can even tell in VR to be fair, it looks great too. I mean, come on, that blue. And look at this pin action. Oh. There's a few minor things which I think could be a little bit better, which I've already mentioned, but on the whole, I am absolutely stoked with the GT Elite cockpit, and I think it's fair to say that it's going to be taking my driving experience to the next level. Yeah. By the way, I just want to say a massive thank you to Next Level Racing for making all of this possible. Not only did they believe in me when they watched my HF8 review video, link to that on top of the screen right now, but they also sent me this entire rig for free, which is just quite honestly incredible. <laughs> it's the stuff of pro YouTubers and I don't know what I'm doing there. But anyway, if you really want to see me put this thing through its paces, then make sure you subscribe to the channel because this is going to be my rig for the foreseeable future. So every race, every video, every live stream, it's going to be in this thing. So if you want an honest opinion, pop into the live chat and say hi, and I'll be more than happy to answer you. And if you happen to be in the market for one of these things, if you're looking at buying a next level racing rig or any piece of next level racing gear for that matter, then I do actually have an affiliate link down in the video description below which doesn't cost you any extra but I get a small cut of the uh, of the sales so if, if you want to help out the channel at absolutely no extra effort and no extra cost to yourself then feel free to uh, use that link in the description but if you did enjoy this video and you found it useful then please make sure to leave it a like and any thoughts any questions any anything leave them down in the comments below but until next time you look after yourselves guys I'm gonna unlock some more laps now <laughs> see ya